don't have podcast books. But um, you know, if you want to be notified of uh, events and stuff like that, just get on our mailing list. So uh, there's a bitly.com uh, URL. You can go there and put in your particulars. And we we'll try to uh, make sure uh, we understand how it's going to work on events and stuff like that. So really want to thank Google again for sponsoring the, the space and food and hosting this event for everyone. Um, and as usual, like we're always looking for presenters to um, come up and talk about uh, things that they're working on. So it doesn't have to be technical. So for example, we'll be talking about um, how we design your Android app. For example, like material design, something well including you. I hope everyone uh, got really took interesting insights from Maury's presentation. Uh, so, you know, as long as you have something to share about you know, we have marketing, um, promoting, or even um, if you are working for a startup, you want to talk about that, what's startup like, working for a startup, working for a startup is like. Uh, so, you know, feel free to send me your topic suggestions, what you're going to talk about. So my contact is at my kang.tolo.gpl.com. So please, uh, how many of you here are developers? Okay, cool. Uh, so you know, this presentation is going to um, show you a little bit of code, but um, I kind of structured the presentation such that we don't really dive too deep into code, just that gets a little bit boring. So um, hopefully you, know, you guys will, will be able to uh, work with me on the slides. So, um, okay, my name is Kang. I work for uh, a local staff called Eagle Kang, and I'm the CTO and developer. Uh, yeah, I'm the first developer at Eagle Kang. I pretty much uh, started the company with my co-founder, uh, Jeremy, and I'm also uh, the founder of SG Android Developers. Yeah. So we started this meetup like um, last year, and uh, we try to have a meetup every month. And uh, so sometimes we'll be at High Street, sometimes we'll be at Google, and sometimes we'll be at some other location. So my Twitter is uh, Kang. Uh, Kang so you can follow me on Twitter, or you can email me if you have any questions. So why messaging? Because everyone that I've been talking to have been doing some sort of messaging app. Uh, it seems like you know, most mobile startup uh, building apps that has some form of messaging feature. So some this messaging feature will allow users to send message to one another. Uh, and the really interesting thing about messaging apps are they are really easy to monetize. So for example, Line app is one of the top apps in the app store that uh, are, that's non-gaming and has the most revenue and is a messaging. So you know that's why I think you know there's a lot of startups are venturing into how to incorporate messaging into the application. Uh, of course, there's exception like WhatsApp that doesn't really make any money since they got acquired. And um, messaging is like used by everyone every minute. So when you when you're trying to build like a mobile app, um, when you think about building an app that's really used by a lot of scale, messaging is just comes naturally that you know everyone's going to be using messaging, the messaging feature within your application versus uh, like a game that you play for 10 minutes maybe when you are bored and sometimes you don't play. So messaging is kind of coherent to our activity. So um, when I thought about uh, doing a messaging app I was, when I was working on this talk, I was thinking how to really easily get developers, how to help developers get up and going with you know, building a messaging app. 
So when you want to build an app, you know, first thing you need to think about your back end, right? Um, where do you store your data? Things like that. But as developers, we really don't want to you know, put ourselves in that position to think about how we want to architect the back end, um, what kind of database we want to use, and stuff like that. So um, I came upon uh, Firebase, which is a really interesting product. Um, so on the on Firebase website, what you know, kind of like the one sentence tagline is they're a powerful API to store your data, uh, and it synchronizes your data across whatever, like web, your Android app, iOS app, uh, anything. Like this, it's cross-platform, and they claim that it's scalable. <laughs> so. To me, what Firebase really is, uh, you know, I kind of listed there you know, as a developer. So I think of Firebase as a data store. It's not like a database. It's a place where you store your data, right? So, um, so you try to move away from the typical um, database and that analogy. And what it does is pro it provides like real-time synchronization of your data between like your app and the database or Firebase. And when you think of Firebase, you really think of URLs. So I'm sure everyone here know what an URL is. And then we'll go into what you know this URL scheme is really like um, for Firebase. But you, um, you realize that there is no, uh, for example, uh, columns or tables and stuff like that. So that what's this how Firebase shine for me as a developer to get this up and running. You don't have to think about um, you know my database, my table, how should I structure my columns and stuff like that. And then most importantly is um, cross platform. And so the, you know there's all sorts of SDKs that you can use for the various platform that you're building for. So. You know, when you talk about data, then you need to think about you know how is your data structure, right? So if you already know JSON, um, okay, who's a developer here that doesn't know JSON? Yeah, everyone knows what JSON is. So it, so you see that it's very intuitive to developers. You think of data as JSON, and like I mentioned earlier, there's no tables, there's no records. You think of your data as just one giant JSON tree. Um, you know, everything becomes a key within that JSON, I guess, within the existing JSON structure. So, um, just a snippet of uh, JSON there that kind of shows what a message looks like if you're thinking of building this uh, messaging app. So, earlier I talked about the URL, and um, this is why. Uh, it is important um, for Firebase. So in Firebase, you don't have um, tables, columns. So how do you access your data? So you think of everything um, as URL. So, so here I have like a Firebase um, that I created called Bookend Demo. And to access this Firebase, you can actually point your, you know, your apps to HTTPS, any demo.firebase.io.com. And under the Firebase, I have like a key called chat. So this, so how do you access that? So you just access, you can access that by going to the same your base URL slash, slash chat. And that's where all your chat data is stored, right? So under, under the chat um, key, there's one go JSON. Uh, documents that that are stored and they look like your messaging, your messages within your app. So when you think of how you want to build a messaging app, what, what you know, well, I'm trying to dumb down so that it becomes uh, easier for everyone to understand. So we talk about channel. Channel means like uh, we think of um, messaging channel things like this data stream, right? And who who is subscribed to this channel, for example? So in your messaging app, you say for example you have a group, right? You know, group, you 
so the group is represented by channel, and you have your participants, right? So, so you can easily represent that using the JSON structure. Um, so the channel name is so for example, I have an Android underscore iPhone. It is a channel uh, that built specifically for uh, this chat room between these two participants. That's me, Android. Name. So under the number of participants, I have like the name of those uh, participants within that uh, messaging structure. So my messaging data structure is pretty straightforward. Like of course you can um, you know have nested uh, structure within your JSON, but just to make it really easy for everyone to understand. So I have basically these three uh, main properties: the message. So the message is pretty much the, the message key is pretty much what your um, payload for your message is. So imagine if I send someone hello, and uh, that's what I will store in the message view. And then the author is you know, who, who's the one who is the sender, right? And the type, is it a text message or is it a sticker message? So um, I'm going to just use a uh, Android application that uh, we worked on, on you know, just a couple of days, um, the past couple of days, to kind of uh, give you guys a, a base idea of how you can model your data uh, if you're building an Android app. So here I have like a uh, chat class, and if you, you remember like from my previous example where how I'm structuring your, your message data structure, uh, so I have like a message type, a denom, a text or sticker. And then um, you know I have a few uh, methods that allows me to easily create a, a chat object. So I can create a text chat object or a create a sticker um, message object. And you know I have also a constructor to uh, initialize some of these uh, properties. So so using so Firebase SDK uh, is great that you don't really need derive anything from, from the SDK so you can keep your, your uh, data structure um, without having anything Firebase in it. And so uh, just imagine you have like a main activity, right? And what you need to do when you want to use, when you want to connect to Firebase is Essentially, you need to hold a reference to the Firebase instance. Um, so I have a Firebase URL that points to uh, my Firebase address, base URL, which is any then the demo.firebase.io.com. And then I have a, a reference to Firebase contract. And there's a few other things in there um, that, you know, uh, that you really need to know at this point. Um, so on your own create, what you need to do is just set the Android context to the Firebase class and create a new Firebase instance and point. So every uh, Firebase um, document, would, there, will, there will be this notion of a child. Child, just think of it as the key. So imagine I have a key chat where I'm storing uh, chat is my channel, right? When I'm storing all messages within this channel, channel. And so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm instantiating Firebase reference to the child chat, which is my channel name. So it can be anything, right? So uh, what I have here is a really simple routine to send message. Let you guys kind of like, you know, um, read through it and see if you can spot. So, a lot of the stuff there, are, you know, in that main routine is all uh, Android stuff, like code you need to you know, get inputs from your user interface and stuff like that. But most importantly, is that one line there, uh, ref.push.set value. So, what that does. This is what you need to save your chat message to Firebase. Uh, so just one line of code. Uh, so it takes your um, your objects and it will automatically.
the um, serial license as JSON and save it to Firebase. So, so, so in this routine, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing uh, whatever that's in the text view uh, and then you know, creating a chat object that's a text message and sending it and saving it to the Firebase reference. So that's the reference to our chat class that we created earlier. So, so, so far I've not talked about synchronization because synchronization is really taken care of it by file-based automatically. So you don't really have to think about how data are saved when you're getting data. Um, so with the Android SDK, uh, so here I'm kind of constructing, let's say, an array of messages, right? So I'm using a uh, this adapter uh, that, that within my list adapter, I'm basically I'm using a file database um, at child event and uh, listener. So from the listener, uh, you get a few things. Uh, basically, you get a callback when, let's say, a child is added, uh, or some, a child has changed, remove or move. In this case, we are building a messaging app. I don't really I don't allow a message to be deleted from the database. So uh, all I care about is when there's a new message that's been saved under the chat. No. So here's going more into the uh, listener uh, on child edit. So there's a lot of stuff happening in here, but basically the the magic is um, when you get a callback, you can get the value from Firebase. And I'm initiating this, this adapter based on the model class, which is chat. And so Firebase automatically, the SDK automatically um, creates the chat objects for you. So all this whole chunk of code is, is saving the chat messages uh, to the model's variable. And then you know, uh, you know, once there's a new chat message that comes in, you just notify data search change. That's how you would do it for this adapter. So when you're presenting your messages, um, if you're using a this adapter, then you should be familiar with your get view, right? So uh, you know, get view. Essentially, I'm getting the the message chat object from the models and then populating it through a routine called populate view. And in my populate view, that's where I will you know construct the view and extract the information from my chat objects. So on here here I have a chat list adapter that is um, standard from the Firebase list adapter. And in my populate view, you can see uh, what I'm getting from this um, routine is uh, the view itself and also the chat object. So within the, this routine, I can, I can do a few things. I can get the uh, message for it. So I can see what type of message or what kind of, what kind of message is this. Is it, is it, is it So when so Pico Candy is a um, sticker store SDK where we provide developers that are building messaging apps the ability to have um, really great stickers inside your application. Um, as you've seen earlier from from the uh, Firebase example, uh, you could. Uh, send a typical just text um, message or you can send a sticker. And in order to send a sticker, you would download up SDK and include this in your Android application. So as easy as it is for Firebase, um, all you need to do is you know, call a few routines and you will have a SDK set up so that you can have a sticker store within your application.
So earlier I showed you how you can send um, a text message. And so this is just a really simple routine um, that wrote up to send a um, sticker. So when you send a sticker, it's basically saving the URL of the sticker to your Firebase um, data store. So what I have on the right is just a demo application that I've written up in the past couple of days that uses this RSDK, uses Firebase, and I can show you a demo real quick. Firebase is cross-platform, so its people can be SDK. So here I have basically a chat room that's set up for two participants, uh, an Android participant and an iPhone, so Android is talking to iPhone. This chat room. So I can just send a message here. So, and you can see it's pretty real time. Uh, not as easily taken care of by Firebase. And it's all, you know, there's, of course there's more code that I'm showing you that's in the app. Uh, but essentially that's the kind of the code that you review so far are the base structure to get this chat application code. And so in, in a lot of messaging apps like Line, Kakao, and um, I don't know, just name one, you'll see stickers within this, um, within the application. So this is a, uh, so with the Android app, I've included the Eco Candy SDK. So you can see, uh, you know, here is all the stickers that I have in my app. And this is the Eco Candy uh, sticker store. 